dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for joining us in another episode of Current Events. As always, I'm your host, Ali Jassim. In this episode, we'll be discussing the issue of homosexuality. Some viewers may find this a sensitive or uncomfortable topic, and we recommend that young viewers either not watch the episode or watch in the presence of an adult who can discuss the ideas presented in it afterwards. From the Holy Quran alone, we know that homosexuality as a practice dates back thousands of years. Yet from the time of Prophet Lut, peace be upon him, to the Greek and Roman empires, to the recognition of same-sex marriages in many secular societies today, it is one that has seen varying degrees of prominence and acceptability. Today, same-sex marriages are legal in 21 countries, most recently Ireland, and for the most part, the United States. Even 20 or 25 years ago, this course of events would have been unimaginable. Yet, in an extremely short amount of time, there has been a vast amount of movement in public opinion on the issue. Yet, in the overwhelming majority of, maj of major world religions, homosexual practices are condemned, including Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism. How, then, can we reconcile these facts? Muslims living mainly in the West must adapt to the demands of coexistence in increasingly multicultural and diverse societies. This includes societies where open homosexuality is the simply unaccepted fact of secular life. How do we, as Muslims, discuss about these issues with our children when they seek some kind of explanation? How do we balance the need for respectful and harmonious social relationships with the teachings of our faith, mainly commanding to good and forbidding the evil? Finally, we must also make an important distinction. Whether one argues that same-sex attraction is a matter of nature or nurture, the fact remains that attraction itself is not a sin in our religion. Rather, it is acting unlawfully upon it. In this way, homosexuality as an attraction is one thing, while homosexuality as a practice is another. Christianity has long made this kind of distinction known as love the sinner, hate the sin. Does not Islam likewise have this concept at its core? Thus, we must also ask how we, as believers, can assist our brothers and sisters who may struggle with same-sex attraction rather than simply abandoning them to fate. As we move forward into this new millennium, we must prepare ourselves to tackle complex social issues and find where our faith stands on all of their various aspects. The issue of homosexuality in the modern world is no exception. Stay with us as we attempt to dissect and discuss this complicated topic. Brothers and sisters, without any further ado, let's meet our guest. He is an Islamic researcher and preacher, the respected Sayyid Saleh al Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidna. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. May Allah bless you. Thank you for having me. Inshallah, you're doing well. Welcome to the show. Sayyidna, let's begin by giving the dear viewers a history of this behavior. The issue of homosexuality is not something new. But the challenges that we are witnessing today are very new and very contemporary because the homosexual acts and the acts of homosexuality have been carrying out and have been taking place for hundreds of years. It's nothing new. And even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a story of one of his prophets one of the prophets, Prophet Lut السلام, who was the nephew of Prophet Ibrahim. This was one of the challenges that Prophet Lut had to deal with because of his people. And ultimately they were punished because of their desires, because they did not control their desires. So there is a history of this act taking place and it's even mentioned in the Quran. It's nothing new. But the Qur'an tells us how to deal with it and how to deal with the circumstances and the situation. And we can take many lessons from the story of Prophet Lut salam, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in one verse, وَلَقَدْ رَاوَدُوهُ عَنْ ضَيْفِهِ فَطَمَسْنَا أَعْيُنَهُمْ فَذُوقُوا عَذَابِي وَنُذُرُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a story of angels that come to Prophet Ibrahim السلام, and they come in the figure of young men. They come to him, they have two missions. The first is that they tell Prophet Ibrahim that his wife is going to be pregnant and he's going to have a son. Then they move on to the village of Lut 
which was he was the nephew of uh, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and in the village of Lut they go and while they go in the village they were attacked by these people now the tafsir of the Quran tells us that initially these people they were very greedy the people of that village they were very greedy and they were not welcoming of people so whoever passes by that village whoever passes by their city they would sexually abuse the men and the woman would sexually abuse the woman so they kept doing this act until it became a habit and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that it became intoxication that they were in Allah says لَعَمْرُكَ إِنَّهُمْ لَفِي سَكْرَتِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ and inshallah we will speak about this later on in the show as we know throughout history this used to be a much hated issue in all the communities what happened in our modern era that has made it something very easy to be open about? It, this issue is disguised and it's not morally accepted in any society. In any society. Even you see that in the United States, a very advanced country, up until 1973, up until 1973, the issue of homosexuality was seen as a mental issue. It was seen as a problem, mental problem, and, and people would go to psychiatrists to be treated. So let's look at history and let's see what has happened from the beginning of time all the way to 1973 and then from 1973 till now. Did we suddenly wake up? Did we suddenly change? Did we suddenly become better human beings and find morality? That's not the case. When we analyze we see that there is a lack of morality there's a lack of of morality and understanding in society around us so it has just because something has become acceptable in society and people are accepting it does not mean that it's the right thing to do because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the people of Prophet Lut everyone was carrying out the act. many people even even some of the close people very close to Prophet Lut salam, and therefore they were all punished they were all punished because of what they did so ba basically sometimes an act becomes very normal because it's socially constructed when I see everyone around in society carrying out an act it becomes very normal and this is something that I've seen many Muslims just a few days ago when the when the US Supreme Court allowed and nationalized homosexual marriage I saw many Muslims unfortunately they were tweeting and they were posting on Facebook on Twitter on Instagram the rainbow flag and showing support to homosexuality oh, wow. so this is it's it's kind of weird since when did homosexuality become the cool thing since when did it become something accepted it has always been looked down upon in history and in society because it's against the norm it's against biology against reproduction and just against sanity basically but when the the problem is when desires are not controlled when hijab is not protected when and when i say hijab i mean the general meaning of hijab not the not the specific hijab that the female is wearing when the general meaning of hijab is not protected and it's not practiced you will start seeing these type of problems. We have narrations, narrations from the Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam, they say that when zina, when adultery becomes very easy, you see it everywhere, then people start resorting to homosexuality. They start resorting to acts that are forbidden and very wrong because they want to be creative. They want to keep feeding that desire, that nafs al ammara that is constantly asking them to fulfill the desires and seek something new. What was the role of media in cleaning the image of homosexuality? Well, I don't know about the media in the Middle East or other places, but I know for a fact that here in the United States, in Europe, in many Western countries, right now you see probably almost every movie, almost every soap opera, every show that you watch, they try to normalize homosexuality before it used to be seen something as a taboo something that was very wrong 
Today, we see that no, they come and they make, they, there's five people, five main actors, one of them is a homosexual. And this is trying to, trying to brainwash and show others that this is something very normal and one in five people, one in ten people is like that and this is something that is acceptable. They are funny, they are educated, they are very nice people and that's, you know, a lot of times some Muslims, they come and they say, we, this is homophobic behavior and we shouldn't be doing this, we should be siding with someone who's oppressed. The, the thing is, as a person, there's nothing wrong with the person. The problem is when the act is carrying out. Anyone who just has desires, desires for the opposite gender or the same gender, as long as that desire is controlled, there's nothing wrong with that. Because the, the religion of Islam just teaches us to control our desires. The same goes for someone who has the desires for the opposite gender. If they have a desire for the opposite gender, does that mean that they're allowed to go and do whatever they want and just let love win, as what we hear today? Uh, the answer is no. The answer is there has to be self-control, even when it comes to someone from the opposite gender. But the media is trying to play on emotions, play on, and is using emotions to control people rather than logic, rather than sanity, rather than using logic and real proof because for example today homosexual marriage is accepted but in the United States for example polygamy is not accepted and incest is not accepted of course rightfully it shouldn't be accepted uh, many other types of relationships are not accepted for example here in the United States if someone is 18 or over and he marries someone or he has a relationship with someone who is less than 18 then this person could end up in jail. This person could be prosecuted. This is a this is a relationship. So why is it that that one is accepted based on emotions and based on letting love win when it's two people from the same gender, but when it's two from the opposite gender, it's not accepted? Said, what is the stand of Islam in this issue? Well, everyone has their own agenda. Some countries they have an agenda. The religion of Islam has an agenda. But if we want to find morality and find what is right, we have to go to the Qur'an. Because many times we humans, we think we know what's right. But in reality, we are following our desires. In reality, later on, time will show us that what we are doing was wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us all with desires. And the religion of Islam has no shame and it does not reject the desires like some other religions. The religion of Islam acknowledges the desire and it even embraces the desire. And this is why you don't see any other religion like the religion of Islam that welcomes and acknowledges and embraces the desire like the religion of Islam. But the religion of Islam has created a solution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the marriage, which is one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created spouses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created spouses from the opposite, opposite genders. And this is one of the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where two, they are the same but they are opposite genders. So that they can reproduce, so that they can live, so that life can continue. خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ Out of yourselves, أَزْوَاجًا Pairs, two different pairs لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So that you find sukoon, so that you find tranquility وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا This is the miracle of Allah. This is the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought for us. But we find some people, they neglect the right path they neglect the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed for them and they go and they take the path, the deviant path, the path that is away from the norm, away from nature, away from what has been accepted and what carries on society, what is biologically proven to carry on society. So other, there are institutions, there are governments, there are groups of people that have their own agenda but we as Muslims we have to follow the Quran because the Quran is the book of gu guidance the Quran is the book of Hidayah 
And the Quran is the book of Allah and Allah is our creator. Allah knows what is best for us and what is needed for us. Yes. Why is Islam so keen about homosexuality? Well, the religion of Islam treats it as one of the haram acts. And there are many haram acts. Adultery is haram. For someone to commit adultery, this is haram. Stealing, you know, there's so many haram acts. This is one of the haram, but this is one of the kaba'ir. This is one of the greater sins. And this is because it's one of the greater sins because it will destruct society slowly. Today, here in the United States, we see it as something that allowing love to win, what they call it, or allowing people to do what they want and get what they want. But in reality, what's the effect? Today, we need to, we need, we Muslims, we need to look at studies and see what are the effects of these children. Right now, in the United States, homosexual marriage is accepted. That means that tomorrow, if someone, he, parents, they pass away and they leave children. The children, they go to an adoption house. If there's no Muslim that come, if there's no family that comes and wants to adopt them, they'll go to adoption house. Then, a homosexual couple, they will come and they will say, we want to adopt this child, this Muslim child or non-Muslim child. They'll come and they want to adopt this child. There's no law that is banning them from adopting that child. So this, it will create a, a deviant society, basically. It will create a society that is going the wrong path. And this is why Islam has a stance against this, because it's against nature first of all, and it's against the Sharia of Allah. What are the consequences of homosexuality for the society? The consequences are that society will slowly be deviant. Society will be going further away from the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed for them. I mentioned that Allah has created marriage. Marriage is to create a family. Marriage is the reason of reproduction. But when these types of acts are carried out, then the way, the sunnah of life, the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has placed life for us to live, and the way the Prophet used to live, and the Imams and the awliya, people are not going to be practicing that life. There are going to be many problems and issues that will emerge as, as this problem becomes very public and it becomes all over the place. Sayyidina, what can we do as Muslims facing this issue in this community? Is there any campaigns working to prevent this from spreading? The thing is, with regards to the homosexual marriage, now it's become a law. And the Supreme Court has allowed it. So there's a legal way. There's a legal way. And of course, this is not something that only the Muslims are fighting. You see religious people from all religions, not only Muslims. You see Jews, Christians. All other religions, they are against this. And religious people, people who follow a way of life, a, the, the natural way, they can seek leisure, legal measures and try to change the law. This is one thing. But then sometimes you hear some Muslims, they'll tell you that there are Muslims, there are people that are born having a desire for the person from the same gender. What are you supposed to do about this? What are you supposed to do about these group of people? They are born with that desire. The answer is, first of all, it hasn't been scientifically proven that anyone is born with that desire. So in, 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 in scholars, they teach us that some desires are socially constructed, and that desire, it may also be socially constructed. But let's say, let's say, for example, for the sake of argument, that some people are actually born with that desire. If they're born with that desire, they still have to control their desire. They still have to control it, just like a person who has a desire for the opposite gender, they also have to control their desire. Right now, if you go to court and you see, you find someone who has molested a child, na'udhu billah, the judge, will the judge tell this person, the judge will tell this person, you did something illegal, you did something wrong. And that person tell the, tell the judge that I was born like this, and let love win, this is, the on, this is my only desire, I, I have, this is my only way, the judge will not allow that. So the same goes for the ones who 
feel like they are born like that, you have we have to try to convince them logically that even if that desire is there, you have to try to avoid that desire and you have to try to control yourself. How do we discuss and explain these issues with our children in order to make them truly believe that this is an immoral thing? This is a very important issue because today many parents, they don't even find time to sit with their children for one hour to speak to them. But you find that those same children, they're in front of the TV, in front of social media for over five, six hours a day watching TV. So this is why it's become kind of a normalized issue for Muslims, at least here in the United States. But um, we have to, parents have to sit and talk to their children. Parents have to explain to their children that this is against the nature, this is against what is, this is against the reproductive system, this is against the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us. And parents need to explain to their children and use logic rather than emotions to have them reach a conclusion. Thank you, Sayyid. Inshallah, all of our children are away from this bad behavior. Sayyid, is there anything you would like to add? Thank you very much. Thank you. Just keep us in your prayers in the shrine of Imam Hussein and Karbala, especially during these holy nights. Inshallah, Sayyidina. Thank you very much. Brothers and sisters, this concludes today's current events. We hope to see you next time. We thank you, dear viewers, for watching, and we thank our dear guest, Sayyid Salih al Quzwini, for joining us. Be sure to join us again on current events. Until next time, Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.